next we'll solve a simple one variable optimization problem. So this example comes from minimum cost analysis and capital investment. And this is a very standard problem arising in this application. So assume we want to invest in a certain project and we need to decide on the capacity of this project. So think about opening a manufacturing facility. So there is a fixed cost associated with opening the facility. And then there is a variable cost that depends on the size of the project. So this variable cost consists of two parts. One part is linear given by Bx. Essentially, you could think of this as a per unit production cost. And then there is a cost part that reflects the economies of scale. So the more units you produce, the less is the contribution coming from this part of the cost. So if you want to plot these three types of costs on a single plot, then we have the size of the project here, the cost here, and A is the fixed cost of opening the facility. Then you have the linear production cost. It may look like this. And then the third part of the cost would be the part that decreases with the size of the project. So it could be something like this. All right, so and when we add all these three together, you will get a shape of this form. All right, so you can see that this is a convex function, as we call it. And clearly there is a point where you are going to achieve the minimum cost. So and our objective is to find this point X star here. All right. And you should know from your previous math courses how to solve this problem. We can use the first order derivative to find the candidate points, right? Because we know that at the points of minima and maxima, the function will have the tangent lines with the zero slope. So whenever we have a minimum or a maximum, we know that the derivative is going to be equal to zero at that point, because geometrically derivative represents the tangent of the slope line to the function, right? So by setting the derivative to zero, we are going to find the candidate points. So C prime of X is given by the derivative of a constant is zero. Then the derivative of the linear term is B. And the derivative of this term is going to be minus C over X squared. And we need to make it equal to zero in order to find the candidate points for our minimizer. And we can easily solve this equation. From here we have x is equal to plus minus square root of c over b. And then because we know that the size of the project must be non-negative, your x star, the only candidate point for the minimizer, is going to be the square root of c over b. Okay. And then uh, how do we know that this is the minimizer? Well, of course, we had a rough graphical illustration here showing that this function is convex. So clearly this will be this point right here. But even if we didn't plot it, we could take the second order derivative for our function and check the sign of the second order derivative at this point. Okay. So in our case, C2 prime of X is going to be equal to 2C over X cube. And uh, whenever X is greater than zero, the derivative is going to be greater than zero. Okay, so which means that the function is convex. So it has a shape like this around our point. Therefore, we can conclude that this is a minimizer and not a maximizer or a saddle point where the derivative could also be equal to zero, right? So this way, using this simple optimality conditions, we can solve this problem. 
And this simple example illustrates what we actually do in general for unconstrained optimization. We find these first order characterizations and second order characterizations of local optima. And then we use the first order characterization, that's where the derivative is equal to zero, to identify the candidate points. And then once we found all the points where the derivative is equal to zero, we are going to test them using the second order derivatives to see what type of shape you have. If it is locally convex, locally concave, which would correspond to maximizer, or you have a saddle point. All right. And the classical optimization methods for nonlinear optimization, they focus on exactly identifying these points where the derivative is equal to zero, which we call the stationary points. And then once you find the stationary points, you try to use other criteria to determine if these candidate points are indeed minimizers, maximizers, or neither. All right, so and some of these criteria are based on the second order derivative. So in higher dimensional problems, the derivative corresponds to the gradient and the second order derivative is called the Hessian. So it's a matrix and we are looking at the local properties of the first and second order derivatives in order to make a call about the local optimality properties of our points. Generally speaking, even if you find all stationary points, it may not be easy to determine whether they're minimizers, maximizers or neither. So in general, this is a very, very difficult problem and uh, optimization in general is very hard. Well, this is a strange turn of events. But luckily in some special cases like this case here, when we have a convex function, we can find the optima relatively easily. And the good news in this course is that we are going to focus primarily on these easier cases where we can actually solve the problem to optimality and we can guarantee that we can solve it to optimality. That's a good plan. I like that plan.